Today, I'm excited to welcome a very good friend of mine as our first guest on Pints and Pixels. He is a fellow Ohio photographer, Mr. Logan Deddy himself. And uh, Logan's a portrait photographer mainly uh, based out of Chillicothe, Ohio. And he's made quite a name for himself online on social media, uh, especially on Instagram within the portrait photography community. So thanks for joining us, Logan. How's it going today, man? Hey, man. Going good. How you been? Dude, doing really well. Um, things have been pretty crazy this month and last month, but uh, all good, all good on uh, the home front here. TJ, how you doing, man? It's been a minute since we caught up. Yeah, it's been uh, super busy here in the store, online. A lot of product releases from companies, which is exciting to me because I feel like that is that that North Star to our industry, that things are starting to pick up, that we're starting to see companies release products. And they're not just the normal release products. I mean, Sony's releasing a blogger-focused camera. We have announcements coming from Lumix, Sony. I, I mean, all of the brands have new, fresh stuff that's coming out. And one thing that's been interesting about the pandemic is it hasn't had to be as much on a certain schedule. And because of that, we're seeing it kind of peppered throughout. So we're not trying to cover you know, all these releases at one conference. It's now being like kind of spread out a little bit. So uh, it's been good to see customers back in the store. It's been good to, you know, just see people photographing again. That's probably my biggest takeaway is, you know, watching your guys' IG feeds and just fellow photographers getting out and shooting again, just getting us to a closer, uh, closer form of normal. So it's been good, man. Very good. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, I got to agree. It's cool to see people out back out and shooting. I know Logan, you were still kind of shooting intermittently between the, all the coronavirus stuff down there. How to, how'd that all go for you? Man, it went really good. Um, I, I say good, but I, I really mean just kind of different. Um, mm -hmm. mainly I'm a photographer, but also I do run a production company. And so we work with a lot of, you know, big companies and one of those companies being a hospital, we really couldn't stay closed. Um, so we were open the entire time during the COVID pandemic and uh, it, it ended up working out in kind of our favor to, you know, continue working and continue making things, uh, whether it be videos for, for them or doing collaborations with social distancing or whatever it might be. Um, I'm in a pretty rural area. I mean, I know up in Cleveland where you guys are, you probably had, you know, in the thousands of, of cases. Um, I don't think we ever broke a hundred uh, uh -huh. down here. So it's a pretty small community, mm -hmm. but uh, it's been really okay. Um, all the stores closed just like normal. Um, you, know, you couldn't go to retail stores. You did wear masks basically everywhere you went. But That's other nice. than that, um, business kind of kept as usual or even busier than usual. So it was, it was good for business. Nice. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah, up here it was kind of crazy. Everything was pretty much shut down and everybody was terrified, it seemed like. But things are slowly getting back to normal, at least it seems like. And actually, I feel like a lot of people are like forgetting about it at this point. But <laughs> so, TJ, why don't you um, let everybody know what, what we're doing here today? Because it's a little bit different than what you and I usually do on the podcast. So I had this idea that... Um we would get people on the show and we would share something from us. And that is Cleveland has a lot of great breweries. Uh, they have a lot of great, um, I mean, all of Ohio has great breweries, but you know, here in Northeast Ohio, we have a lot of great ones. So the original idea was, you know, we would ask a guest to come on, we would send them one of our favorite beers and we would all enjoy it. So just like enjoying, like having a friend come over, like, Hey, Hey Logan, why don't you come over to my place and let, let's talk about, you know, photo and business. And I just got these new beers. It's that same premise, but, done via podcast. Uh, so what I soon found out is you're not allowed to ship beer. Uh, so got the first four pack to send out and couldn't ship it out. Uh, so then we, then we tried Instacart, which was uh, yesterday, which was a bunch of confusing texts from my um, intern of <laughs> Logan's birth date and his address. And it was very, very odd, I'm sure, uh, to which Instacart, because he does live in such a rural Ohio area that uh, Kroger wouldn't deliver to him. So finally, we're like, hey, if you just go tell us what you have down there. Um, we'll find it up here and we're just going to send you a gift card. So that, that's why we are all here. So the idea is, you know, hanging out with friends, drinking a beer and talking about the photo industry, but also talking a little bit about the beer. Um, so today we have the Great Lakes Brewing Company, Siren Shores. And this was, I was turned on to this by uh, Caitlin, who works here at the store. It is a passion fruit saison. Uh, so it's an ale with um, fruit and spices. So, um, 
you guys have not tried this yet, right? This is your no, first time. I'm not. Okay, let's start. No, let's I'm start actually not a big Saison fan, so. Let's see how it goes. Let's start with Logan. Let's let's hear the uh, first taste. Let's get your feedback. Um, and I also want to know if this is a beer that you normally uh, would go after. That is, impressions are. That is spicy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say um, probably something I would drink with just a steak, but just one. And then that would be it <laughs> because um, that is a very, very potent kind of taste. Excellent. Okay, your your turn, Justin. Your my see, turn. Okay, I poured mine out. I'm I'm in a glass. So let's see here. Nice. Yeah, I so actually this one is not as bad. I've had a couple different saisons. I think it, I don't even know how you say it honestly, but I, I tend to avoid them because of the aftertaste. And this one definitely has that aftertaste, but I think the passion fruit kind of helps out with that a little bit. So I don't mind this, but I'd probably lean towards something else if it were me at a bar. Good deal, good deal. And I did want to point out that this is one of Great Lakes' first um, rebranding. So up till this point, they've had very Ohio history. Um, mm -hmm. Their other names have been like Commodore Perry and the Elliott Ness, and they've been very Cleveland, Ohio, which they've actually found, according to their marketing, is hurting them in other markets because people don't know or don't care who those people are. Uh, so now they're going with more generic E names. I mean, Siren Shores isn't generic, but it's, you know, people aren't going to not resonate with that. So I thought that was interesting, interesting. with uh, branding as well. So yeah, uh, yeah so really that's that. that we are enjoying today. So let's go ahead and get into the podcast a little bit. Logan, why don't you just tell our viewers kind of who you are, what you shoot, and kind of how long you've been doing this. Definitely. Um, so my name's Logan. I run Logan Daddy Photo in Chillicothe, Ohio. It's a small town of only about 20,000 people. Um, I've been doing this in Chillicothe for roughly 10 years. Um, I say roughly because I did have a small um, adventure, if you want to call it, in Dayton, Ohio, whenever I went to college. And so I actually went to college at Ohio Institute of Photography and Technology from about 2012 to 2015. And there, uh, there was a two-year program for portrait photography, which I took. But then also I took a uh, kind of two-semester crash course in commercial photography. And literally it was the, you know, guidance counselor coming to me and saying, hey, if you stay for two more quarters, you can get a whole nother degree. And I was like, I'm game. So um, I buckled down and, uh, you know, just really worked it. Uh, and I've been kind of doing it ever since. Um, whenever I came back from college, I didn't just start in photography. Obviously, I had a ton of student loans and that really kind of crippled me in the beginning. I mean, if, if I want to say there was a moment in my career that really hurt, it was that. It was the debt of having student loans. And I had to make ends meet. I mean, I'm in a small town. I, I can't do what some of these big studios do because I'm just one guy with one camera. And I, I had to make it work. And so for me, I went and started working at a plastics factory. And I made parts, car parts for... Uh, about six months, um, six months after high or out of college, that's what I did. And after the plastics plant, I went to another plastics plant because I still wasn't done paying student loans. If you know anything about them, they don't go away. Um, <laughs> so I kind of drink to that. <laughs> uh, right. Right. So I kind of had to make it work. And a little bit about like me personally, um, in that time, whenever I was kind of understanding you know, my life and where I was and what I was doing. I uh, met the love of my life, Haley, and I got married. And she was the one that really convinced me to just go after my dreams and make it mine and do it for me because she believed in me and she knew what I was capable of. And I was always doing side gigs and fun stuff and weddings and senior portraits mainly throughout that time. But it became really clear once I got married and once I was spending so much time at work away from home that I really need to be my own boss. I really need to make a career of my own to be able to enjoy the things I want in life. And that's ultimately where I've been led to and where I'm at now. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity that I currently have. 
I know we were talking a little bit before the show went and uh, let's talk. I want to talk a little bit about like Logan Deddy. I mean, you said that, you know, you did um, portraits and also the hospital stuff, but what is like the layout? Cause you had mentioned that, you know, you had, you know, you kept the guys working through um, guys and gals through COVID. So what is like your business? How is it laid out and what do you do there? Definitely. So, we are a one-stop shop. That's the one thing I like to call it here in Southern Ohio is that we are not only a photography studio, but also a production company and a directing house for multiple businesses and uh, companies to be able to come to and gain resources or information on what they need. So through the time that I've been doing this, which 10 years is, I would say a long time. It's a third of my life, you know, um, mm -hmm. 10, through the 10 years, I've really grabbed on to um, a, a lot of the benefits of technology and leveraged them in my benefit to be able to provide those resources to people who don't necessarily understand the technology. So whether it be photo for weddings, um, video for a company or um, live streaming consultation for a company that maybe is smaller or is just getting started in kind of um, the, the know abouts of video, I want to be the answer for them. And that's what I've always tried to be in my community um, or outside of my community as much as I can. It's really kind of led me to a place of um, having to be the person that knows what's what to do whenever no one else knows what to do. And it's a little bit scary to live in that realm sometimes where I have to be the one that has the answers. Um, and whenever I don't have the answers, I'm never hesitant to say, I don't know. <laughs> like, I have no clue what you need to do. But whenever it comes to photo and video and live streaming, I really feel like I have a good handle on what to do and what would be the right um, efforts to make or the most cost effective uh, direction to go. So that's kind of what we do. Um, and it, it's really full service. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you name it, we can do it. Except for babies, we don't photograph babies. I send, uh, <laughs> I send children portraits are a hundred percent somebody else's thing. I will, yep. I will say that loud and clear. So, um, but that's that's kind of w what we do. Nice, yeah. I mean, uh, Logan, you and I have probably known each other for a long time. I've seen your well a few years now, but I've seen your business even develop from the first time that we met online. To where it is now and it you know you're in a position um of you are very knowledgeable and very talented at what you do and you're able to utilize that to your advantage being in a smaller town that you can actually take that and you know develop your business to the point that it's grown to now where you are able to be a production house and also a d director and all of that other stuff that you were just talking about like that is really cool to see and i think it's really it would be inspiring to a lot of our listeners to you know see that and understand that they too can do that you know i mean not one of our questions we necessarily have for you for our interview here but what uh i mean i we talked about this in past podcasts and you having experience in going to school for it myself having experience in going to school for it tj did not go to school for photography what is your kind of thought process there on you know turning photography from your passion into a career is school necessary like what is your thoughts on that that's that's really um, it's really crazy. You ask me that question, especially right now. Um, I have three employees with that that help me do what I do, and I, I was telling TJ before the show started, they're no older than twenty years old, and I think that um, they have a very unique situation where they are able and allowed to take what they are given and do what they want with it. That's not the case for most people. It's just true. Um, most mm -hmm. people are, are in the situation where they feel like they have to do something because they are told to, or they feel like they need to do something because it's what the society requires of them. I'm sure a lot of you listening can feel that you can understand what that kind of feels like. It's a tension. Mm -hmm. It's a pressure. It's a fear. I, I am one to believe that your fear should not be able to control you because it is not allowed to. And that you 
shouldn't necessarily attend college just because it is something that your parents or your friends or your grandparents are asking you about or saying, are you going to college somewhere or are you attending anywhere or where have you been accepted to? If you have a passion and if you are geared in the right mindset to accomplish goals that will see you succeed, you should start to accomplish those as soon as possible. As soon as humanly possible, as soon as you graduate high school, or as soon as you move into a new area in life, you should start to accomplish goals and set them. That's the first thing. But um, I would say that you don't necessarily need to attend college to be able to have a career in photography or video or production. Um, you need to be around the right people. And that's something that I was lucky to do whenever I got out of college, not necessarily something that I learned while I was in college. So <laughs> that's my perspective on it. So I think that's you... a, a great point. Sorry. No, that's, that's okay. I was just going to toss in real quick that like the people who you surround yourself with can influence that so much more than just a degree can, you know, I think that's a really good point to toss in there, but sorry, TJ, go ahead. I have a question for you guys having not gone through college for photography. I went for tech and business, but when you go through college, do you get like, are you able to use student loans for gear? That's my question. No, no. I don't believe so. I think, but at my school, I mean, I'm, I would imagine the same with yours. We had a pretty vast like rental lab that we could go and rent equipment out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, people use student loans for things they shouldn't all the time. It's just a matter of if it's smart or if you're going to get caught for using it for the wrong yeah. things. But I, mean, I knew I people who were sitting on yeah. vacation. Well, like the interest rate and what it would be and all that. But I'm, I'm sitting here thinking like if I had the opportunity, like if I'm up against a wall and my options are, you know, go work at a factory, no pre-college, like just go right into the workforce, um, having nothing, starting with nothing, or at least I can go to school. And if I could at least get gear, and start is that a way to do it you know i because there's people out there that just don't even have the money to get a camera you know what i mean right. or money to rent a camera so like how do you it's like the chicken that, that was me tj i didn't have money for a camera whenever i graduated college so i, I mean, mean that, so how that was me. so did you i mean because obviously working at a plastics factory you know you're having to pay on those student loans now you're young you're starting a family you know how did like did you just did you save for it did you rent first like how does that how did that transgress um i would like to say it's luck but i think it's a lot of perseverance i was uh, um approached whenever i was one year out of college and i was approached by a studio that allowed me the opportunity to do video for them now i hadn't done video since i was a skateboarder you know, like making fun videos with my friends with my phone. But I was approached by them asking if I could do wedding films. And I took the opportunity as a huge advantage for me where I could then, he was, a, he was allowing me the opportunity to purchase all of the equipment. And then I was going to work to pay off that equipment in a certain amount of time. Nice. And I would encourage any studio that's out there, go find an 18, 19, 20 year old that wants the same thing and do it because you will see that they will start to, if you're a good employer, you will see that they will start to gravitate towards what you do and what you like. Now, I don't want to say that this person was a bad employer. They weren't by any means. They were very nice to me. They were very kind. Um, however, they were business mindseted and they had a very specific goal on their return on their investment. They were investing in me. Um, and so some of it is luck, but a lot of it is perseverance because I had to personally walk around for an eight hour to 10 hour day with three tripods, four cameras, six lenses, eight ND filters, all that. I mean, and then do the editing on top of it. So the perseverance that I feel like I was able to achieve did, did come from me accomplishing something previous in life, which was college. I accomplished it, but it wasn't necessarily because I went to college that I was able to accomplish it. It was only because I was able to do it. So if you are able to do it, 
and you are able to succeed in what you want and what your goals are, then this opportunity could be given to anyone, not just me. Um, that's, that's the big thing that really propelled me and allowed me to push my photography into a whole new world. But, but I don't think it was only because of them that I was able to do this. Right. You had that dedication. hard it's work and dedication. Oh, go ahead. No, I think dead. we were actually saying the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. just that, that dedication towards it, that your passion, that was what was your driving force to get you to that next level where you were then able to purchase your first camera. Yeah. You know, you put your, you aligned your needs and your passion together to get to your next level. And you, you worked, worked to get to that, which yeah. is a great thing. And um, I wanted to also ask while we're still kind of on this, you know, you're talking about video and how you, that's how you got started. And I, I wanted to bring up because I've seen it. I don't know how many people who may be watching this have seen it, but I know you started a new account and something that you've started doing on TikTok and on Instagram. Both is your ports in motion. And I wanted to say, you know, see if you wanted to talk a little bit about that, too, and talk about how that's maybe affected your portrait business or how you're incorporating that into your portrait business, give people an insight as to what it is because, you know, ports in motion, what does that mean exactly, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that ports in motion is really a conglomerate of everything I've learned, whether it be lighting or color or video or photography, it's a, it's a huge combination of everything. And it allows me to have an outlet that now I'm, again, excited about, but also something that I'm still learning in, where I can take a photo and edit it and make it look really good, and then take that same style or idea and then dump it onto a video that has the same look and feel and emotion and drive behind it. And so for me, this was something that I just randomly thought of. I, I don't even know how I came up with it, but it, it it was just something that I just wanted to do and I do it for free. It's not necessarily a business model. It's not something I upcharge for. It's not something that um, you know I, I sell um, in a package or as an add-on or anything. It's just if I'm in the moment and I notice a good photo, I'll take a video of it too and I'll capture it in slow motion and I'll color grade it and I'll make it look really cool and I get a you know, a really neat video out of it. And that's for me, you know, that's a personal goal. And mm -hmm. so I feel like I, I have to have that creative outlet myself and also allow myself to fail in it because the truth of the ports in motion, Justin, that you might not know is that oh, if only about 20% of them work out. Um, me and my wife have gone out and tried to do two or three or four of them and they just never worked out. Whether the lighting was bad or the color didn't match or something was just kind of off about the video, it doesn't always work. So until I can perfect something and make it real, I won't charge for it ever. Sure. A, yeah. I mean, brilliant. to explain what it is a little bit, uh, because I don't know if TJ, if you've even seen what these are, but essentially what Logan's been doing is he'll get a photograph of somebody, you know, in a pose in a certain location, but then he also will do a video and then take, make it slow motion of the person kind of either falling into that pose or starting in the pose and then like going into a separate pose or something or a different pose. Um, but that's, he's been doing that and then he pairs them together on Instagram and he matches the color grades up with them. So you have the one portrait that's a still, and then you have the same portrait, except it's in slow motion as a video. That's pretty cool. I it's definitely really, see that more it's really fun, fun, man. It's really fun. I have a blast with them. Nice. So you yeah, mentioned, very interesting. That, you know, you had, you know, only so many of them work. So that's one of the questions that we like to ask is, you know, looking back at your career and how you've gotten to this point, you know, what was a key failure that happened and how did you learn from it to become stronger? That's tough. <laughs> and that's the thing too. I want to let listeners know about. <laughs> questions like that. There's, there was no like pre-show, like we want to know. I like, have it. I have it on the tip of my tongue. I just don't know how to how to say it. Um, okay, so I think a key failure of mine is a lack of communication. I think that communication is the most important aspect of photography that people miss out on. I think that it's the most important thing in business that people miss out on. Mm -hmm. And 
when you can articulate and communicate what you want and who you are, you will see the ROI that you are expecting or the, or the photograph that you are expecting or the edit that you are expecting. When you can communicate the best in who you are to someone else, it excels you as an individual. That's the truth in multi, in, in, in any realm. But I think that the, the truth is, is that I failed in communicating what I felt. And maybe it's a guy thing. I don't know if you guys can relate. I hope you can't, <laughs> you know, I, I feel as though, you know, anyone can struggle with this, but males especially fail in communicating who, what they're feeling in the moment. And instead we are reactive and we say things that probably jab and hurt people um, rather than accepting the position that you're in and then understanding it and then being able to communicate in a way that doesn't hurt people. That's something I failed in. Whenever I communicated to an old employer that I was no longer happy working for them, it was a blow up. It was a loud, screaming, argumentative mess of emotions in the middle of a wedding, in the middle <laughs> of photographing someone's wedding. So if you want to talk about a real screw up, and I don't think the bride knew this. I don't think that the groom under, I don't think that the parents, it was between me and this person, but it was the, it was the situation that we were in was so tense. And so it had built for so long. I was silent from maybe let's say, you know, August all the way up until December. And I was fed up and I finally was just like, screw it. I'm done. I give up. I'm done working. It was bad because I failed to communicate my feelings every step of the way. This happens with clients. This happens with family. This happens everywhere that you will look because people fail to communicate. And that that's what ultimately is my biggest failure. So what have you, like, what is your big takeaway there? I mean, do you find yourself that you are, you know, do you have checkpoints with yourself as far as being able to communicate? Do you, you know, are, are you more cognizant of that now? Like, how have you improved on that? I think the way that I've improved on that is by not complaining. Complaining is communicating. It is. But it, in, it is in a way that causes yourself harm rather than helping the person or helping yourself. It, rather than coming to resolution with the conflict, complaining just causes you to feel more anxiety and more pressure and more stress in the situation. So rather than complaining about the 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 area that I'm struggling with, with someone or some person or something, I allow myself to think about the reasons why they are causing me to feel that way. What's the reason why they're causing me to feel that way? I never thought about that as a young person. You know, I, I always was reactive. I was like, you know, well, you screwed me. I'm going to screw you, you know, well, you, you know, you messed, you, you know, you did me wrong. I'm going to do you wrong. Well, why did they do me wrong in the first place? But like, if we can understand that and we can pause for a moment and try to get a good baseline, then maybe we can start building on the communication factor and understanding where each other stand. So would you say it's like an understanding of compassion, maybe more so? It's empathy. Having, it's, it's, yeah. it's empathy a hundred percent. That's interesting because I can definitely relate. I mean, I can think back on even coming out of school and a couple of relationships that I had built with other creatives in the area here that kind of ultimately ended up blowing up. And, you know, I, I still have certain viewpoints on them where I don't know that it was necessarily my fault, but I think communication in that, like the communication was the reason for the, the fallout in the first place. You know, the communication wasn't good enough and we weren't on the same page and everything just got mixed up. And so I think that, I totally understand where you're coming from. And I think 
you're probably right. Like from a guy's perspective, it's really easy to get, you know, somebody does you wrong. You're like, Oh, I have to go in, you know, wrong them or not necessarily wrong them or get back at them for what they did to me. And at some point that becomes a toxic cycle. And you, you know, it only took a couple of times for me to catch on to that. Like, I can't keep doing this because it's taking so much of my energy away from everything else that I want to be doing and need to be doing that. Yeah. I can't continue to worry about this. Like, I just need to move on past it, drop it and just be the bigger person and move on. If it is that case, or if, you know, or look at it from the other perspective too. I've had that instance within Cleveland creates and our team, we, you know, we had a couple instances where we had some fallouts and some people who were feeling that things weren't going their way or they were overworking themselves. And I wasn't looking at it from that perspective. I was looking at it from my perspective as the mm-hmm. person who was leading it. And so it, there's, uh, it's a learning experience the whole way through, but I totally understand where you're coming from. And, and, and Justin, that's a hundred percent natural. That is natural. That is, that is mm-hmm. the human nature is to do that. It's you're not wrong for feeling that way and for looking at it only through your own perspective. I want, I want to make sure people understand that too, mm-hmm. that, that you are allowed to feel that way. It is okay to feel those emotions, but it's not okay to be reactive with those emotions. That's what caused right. me harm. That's what broke me down. That's what, mm-hmm. that's what was my biggest fallout was that someone would send me an email and say, this does not meet our expectations. And I would say, well, I don't know what your expectations are. Yeah. You know, that, that causes harm. Rather than saying, I apologize. I did not have your expectations in front of me at this moment. If you would like to communicate those, I would be more than happy to help you through that process. Mm -hmm. Don't react. Understand. Just don't, don't react. And, and I have to tell myself that every single day because I still struggle with it. I still have problems where I'll, I'll be reactive because I'll think everything is a 10 and it's really a two. That's yep. a great business tip that you just gave. And a lot of times what I'll do with email is I'll type out the whole email, but I won't put anything in the actual like two field. And then I'll just sit on it for 24 hours. You know, wow. I don't want to hit that send button. I don't, wow. I want to sleep on it. And, you know, just not putting anything in that send button is, or in that send box allows me to kind of take that break and come back with a fresh set of eyes. You know, after I can, you know, sit on it for a little bit, I can talk to my wife about it. And then a lot of times I'm coming with a lot, like you said, I can reflect on that and I can say, okay, where did this break down? Because nobody just, nobody wants to be mean to somebody, at least you hope not, you know? So, you know, where did this fall apart? Where was this communication missed? And try to understand that because the faster that we can understand that, the faster we can come to a resolution. And like you said, with like blowing up and things like that, I had a very similar experience with an employer not my last employer, this was a while ago. And, um, you know, basically I just, again, it, there was a lot of relationships that were broken because of it. And it was because for so long, like you, I just kind of held it in and I didn't say, you know, this is how I feel or this is changing. And, you know, with Panasonic, my last job, you know, I did, I, I communicated, this is how I feel. And, you know, I said, if we can't do this, like it's, it's a mutual, like, Hey, I'm out. And that, like, even just looking at that difference, they were like, you know, we can't do that. Like, that's not where we're going. And, you know, we both kind of parted ways and all those relationships are still intact. Like if I need anything, if they need anything, like I had a call this morning at like 7 a.m. with someone from there about a live stream we're doing tomorrow. And just looking at those two different, you know, things where you're leaving a job and just by communicating it earlier on how much better that result is and those friendships are maintained and just it's better off for absolutely everyone. So a question I have, so that was kind of not necessarily a negative. I mean, failure sometimes have negative connotations, but a lot of times those are some of the best things that you can do because you've learned to communicate so much better, but let's switch gears a little bit and say like, what is the best memory of your career? Oh my gosh. Best memory of my career. I would say the best memory of my career was whenever I was contacted by three individuals from some different states and they asked me if I would come to Chicago and meet up with them and teach them how to use a 35 millimeter lens. That was the main purpose that they wanted to accomplish in in me coming up there was how to use a 35 millimeter lens. And I loved it. I, I was able to, to tell them different, some different things and give them some new ideas. 
Um, I was able to be as, you know, as loud and sporadic and crazy as I wanted in the moment. I had no, you know, um, I had no limitations. I was able to just kind of be me and love who I was being and enjoy it. And they were getting a lot out of it. And of course a rainstorm had to come finish the day, but it was, it was so much fun to go somewhere new that was new for me and new for them. And um, the three, the three individuals that, um, that invited me up there, they brought one of their senior models with them to, to Chicago to be photographed. And they loved the experience. All the girls that they brought were so nice. And they were like, we, we, we've had so much fun. This has been amazing. Can't wait to see the photos. We were taking Polaroids the whole time. We were doing stories throughout the day. I mean, it was, it was just an expression of me as I am and you as you are and us as a group together of people that have never met and people that have, you know, literally just communicated through the internet. And now we're here. What do we do? And I was in the same <laughs> boat. We were all in the same boat together. All of us were like, what do we do? We've got the whole city. I don't know what to do. And it was so positive. It was the greatest experience I've ever had. Dude, that's I think awesome. I saw because they were awesome. I think I did too. I was going to say that. I think I remember when that happened. And I also had, I've had a similar experience too, where I did this twice now. I went one time, I like a, a few, let's see, it was two photographers and two models that I didn't know. And we all decided we were going to take a trip to LA. And we were all from this area, but I didn't know them very well at the time. So we just got an Airbnb. We're like, we're going to go out for five days or seven days, however long it was. And we're just going to go out and shoot and create and get to know each other and That's see cool. what we can do out in LA. That was an awesome trip, super fun. And then I did another one very shortly afterwards. It was like two months later where I went and uh, I was working with a company called Unfain at the time. That was a company I had met on um, social media, but everybody that was involved within it was from across the country. So most of the people had never met each other. We were all basically strangers except for online conversations that we had had. And we all decided to meet up in San Diego and we spent four days in San Diego doing the same thing, creating, connecting with people. We held a meetup out there that we pulled, like none of us are from San Diego either. And we had like 40 people show up to this meetup that we just decided to have while we were there. So cool. And it was a great time, like just connecting with new people and creating and trying new things and learning off of other people. It was, it was a great experience. That's awesome. That's awesome. Great experiences for sure. So this is this has been pretty heavy. So I, I want to lighten it up a little bit. Let's go through a quick lightning round. Okay. So these are going to be very kind of short, just short six questions, uh, but they are like right at the tip of the tongue, fast answers. Okay. Are you ready? I feel for like who? Have Wait for who? For you. These are for you, Logan. These are for you. Oh gosh. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, ready? Mac or PC? PC. Why? Because I hate it. <laughs> because you hate Mac or you hate PC? I hate PC. You said to choose one, so I chose the PC, but I chose PC because I hate it. Okay. <laughs> Lightroom or Photoshop? Right. Wait, wait, wait. Say it again. Lightroom or Photoshop? Lightroom. Why? Because of the organization. I like it. Speedlight or Studio Strobe? Um, Speedlight. Okay. Why? Because there's a balance between them called the 8200, and it's both in the same, and I love that flash. Love it. Android or iOS? iOS. Why? Because it pairs with my Mac. <laughs> domestic or craft beer? Uh, domestic. Why? Because it sits well on my tummy. Because <laughs> it doesn't taste <laughs> like passion fruit saisons from Great Lakes. Um, one piece of gear that you couldn't live without? Oh, my gosh. One piece of gear I couldn't live without is my charger for my computer. Oh, good. See, that wasn't too hard. That was six quick questions. That was not where I thought you were going to go with that. I thought you were going to come back to the 35 millimeter there. <laughs> no, dude. One, I can't live without my charger to my computer. I can live without 35. Can go. <laughs> I, if, I don't, if I don't have my laptop charger, I'm screwed. <laughs> That's, yeah, it's a great point. You got to. All right. Yeah. I'm with you, TJ. So let's get into a couple more like fun questions here, I think, and uh, liven it up a little bit. So, all right. So here's a scenario we came up with. Let us know what your thoughts are on this, Logan. Okay. All right. So tragedy strikes. You have one camera, one lens, and $500 in your pocket. What is that camera? What is that lens? And how would you use $500 to relaunch your business and or stay afloat? 
Wow. Um, the camera is the Sony A7R three. The lens is the 24 to 70 2.8 GM. And the $500 is Instagram advertisements. That's how I would do it. Interesting choice. So tell us yeah. about that. So why, why, why is your horse in this race Instagram? Do what? So why is your horse in this race Instagram? Why isn't it Google ads? Why isn't it Facebook ads? Why isn't it $500 in local ad spend? This is a little in depth. So I would say that the number one place that Facebook excels is in groups and those are free. And you can communicate and excel in Facebook groups better than you can with ads. Um, I would also say that personal communication and then connecting on Facebook is better than just um, connecting on Facebook randomly to someone that you've advertised to. I would say that Instagram for me is a better platform because teenagers are on it and I can sell senior photos for roughly an average of $900 a session. And Visco is completely free. So I would go ahead and use that as well. Um, in, in, Instagram is going to kind of always be a home base, at least for in current world. Um, the reason that I would say Facebook ads is because then you can target specific individuals based on different things. So I could target just 13 to 18 year olds and try to get them in the senior market. I mean, that's, that's where I started was seniors. I, I didn't do anything else. I didn't shoot my first wedding until I had 10 seniors under my belt. Um, uh, you know, you've got to have bragging rights at least somewhere. And I would say seniors is probably the most forgiving place to do that. <laughs> um, you're allowed to fail at seniors. A lot of people do, and it's okay. And most seniors, at least in my area, just get senior portraits done with an iPhone and uh, portrait mode on their phone. So um, that's, that's okay. But that's really the reason that I kind of chose the avenue that I was going to spend the money. Um, I would say that the 24 to 70 gives me the most versatile focal length, especially because the a seven R three allows me to capture an 18 megapixel JPEG or an 18 megapixel photo with a crop sensor. So now I can take that full frame a, um, a seven R three, you know, sensor crop it down to 18 megapixels. And I've roughly got a 50 to 150 lens. So it's kind of a two in one, you know, I'm able to get a lot out of my, out of my lens and my bang for my buck. So that's kind of the reason I chose camera and lens. Um, I would go super creative, but you said one lens, one camera. So those are the two I'd pick. I love it. I'm right there with you with the, the 24 to 70 pick, but I hadn't thought about cropping the sensor down. I just like 24 to 70 is just like my bread and butter. Like, I know I, if I have that lens, I'll be safe no matter what the scenario yeah. is. Yeah. So that's why I'll, I always cater to that. Like if I, I, I even said in like a, uh, I think one of, I don't know, it was past, no, it was a YouTube video I put out. Like I've been doing so much content lately. I don't remember where I'm putting things at, but it was on a YouTube video. And that's what I said. It's like 24 70. If I had to pick one lens, that would be the one because you know, you, you got all your bases covered. You need something wide. You need something a little bit more telephoto. It's all in there, but yeah, I'm with you on that one. I thought the Instagram ads was interesting, though. I've not really had super successful Instagram ads in the past, and I've had better ads with Facebook, but that's interesting to hear that perspective on it. Um, Facebook ads, just to give you a recap, 13 to 18-year-olds in a local community, they're interested in cheerleading, football, and cross-country. Good to know. Good pick. So Good. there's your there's your little, your little stick there if you want to try to promote to some kids. Um, I know that's not always fun. It's not, it's not a hot topic is how to promote to kids. Um, but, but there's, there's <laughs> your little three guys are talking about it. No, there, no, it's especially not. Uh, but, but it's, it's, it's a nice uh, thing to talk about is how to promote. So. Absolutely. So like we talked earlier in the show that you, you were the, you're the dreamer in the business where you're coming up with ideas. You are maybe not fully operationalizing them, but you're passing them off. So where do you see, your business going in the next five years? Like what is next for 
you. And I know that's ever evolving, but where do you see it looking out five years? You're scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, no, I'm scaring me because I've asked my question that and I've asked that question to myself a lot lately. Um, I would like to see my business move more towards um, an area of self growth, meaning that it's able to grow itself that I don't necessarily have to put as much energy in as I'm receiving income out. And I don't mean that by raising prices. That's not what I mean. Uh, what I mean is I want to see more revenue streams. I want to see different areas of encouragement and growth throughout my company. So whether that be um, building up the you know local senior photographer, well, but whether that helping uh, be helping the, the wedding photographer create a better contract, or betting better pricing arrangements or um, creating tutorials or trainings online um, to help people better their photography and understand it in a more simplified term. That's where I want to see my company grow and where I see myself kind of evolving to is more in a teacher kind of role. Um, for those of you guys listening in is, is air quotes, a teacher is like uh, kind of a hot, a weird word, um, but more of a, an educator in a sense. A mentor. Yeah, mentor. Correct. Excellent. So looking back, you said 10 years. So let's say we jump into a time machine and we go back 10 years. Like what, how, what would you coach yourself? Like what would you tell yourself when you were first at that plastics factory doing something that you didn't enjoy? Like what would you tell yourself? I know your wife was a catalyst to say like you can do this, but like how would you coach yourself to get to where you're at now? Like, how would you coach yourself? Probably the same way I already coached myself. I, I have to be honest. Um, I, this is, this is way before I listened to Gary Vaynerchuk or any, in you know, in, um, like a business I almost said, influencer. In, yeah, in, influencer speakers into my life. It's, um, just keep grinding, keep going. Don't stop. You have it in your pocket. It's already there. The world is yours. Those, those types of small words are enough for me to continue. You're not failing. You are enough. Don't worry about money. It will come. Those, those types of small stickers always really help me. You know, the, the, the basic, you know, mom Facebook post of, you know, you are enough. I, I, I get something out of those yeah. be, because it's, it's a lot for me. I would tell myself that um, the night shift job is worth it. As long as you're making the daytime worth it. Mm -hmm. It, that's what I would tell myself, you know, um, you'll sleep when you're dead. That's, <laughs> that's what, my, that's what I'll tell myself. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I, I mean, that's, that's the kind of things I'm, I'm, I'm the, you know, that type of person to just kind of, push forward that's what i that's what i tell myself now is that a self thing you're telling yourself that or are you somebody who needs to hear from other people because i know people who are kind of both ways like i i myself am a very self-motivated driven person I, I i get the feeling that that's where you're coming from with it too but i think there's a lot of people out there who look for that from other people and look for affirmations and um you know the like looking for somebody to tell them like, Hey, you don't have to worry about this. Like if you're looking for that, what would you have any advice to somebody who is looking for that from other people versus it, it coming from them internally? I would say if you're looking for affirmations from other people in, in how to grow what you're doing, you know, the knowing that you're driving on the right road or going in the right direction I would say make sure you know it yourself first. Believe it in your own heart before you can accept it from anyone else. That's the only thing I could say. Believe it for yourself. I mean, if you don't believe it yourself and you have to hear it from other people first, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's going to be a really hard expectation to continue moving in. Even once you say, yes, this is the direction I'm going to go, it's going to be really hard to continue down that 5, 10, 15 years from now if you don't believe it yourself. You have to believe it for you. 
Yeah, I think I'll, I'll connect a point from earlier here, too, because as you were talking, I thought about this a little bit more in my mind. But I think surrounding yourself with the right people can get you that. And then it's not, you don't have to look for it because it'll come and then you'll connect those dots. Yep. You'll you're, the positive affirmations will come in and eventually it'll become your mindset. Yep. And I think that's a very important part to surround yourself with people who will help you achieve that mindset. Yeah, you're totally right, man. Um, I, I also believe in um, that you can be the you can be the manifester of the people you want to be around. If you want to be around smart people, tell yourself that you're smart. If you want to be around dumb people, tell yourself that you're dumb. Exactly. It's easy. It's really simple. Mm-hmm. Um, and and sadly, it's that simple. But it really it really really is that simple. I have to be uh, completely transparent in this moment because I feel the need to. Uh, whenever I was in college, I smoked a lot of marijuana, um, a lot. And I almost failed uh, college in that moment because I was surrounded by people who weren't encouraging me in the right direction. They were encouraging me in a different direction. And whether that be a bad direction, or the wrong direction is completely up to you. I'll let you be the judge of that. But for me personally, um, that was not the direction of my life that I saw myself moving in. So I had to not only distance myself from the substance, but also distance myself from the people. And sometimes people uh, who are struggling and going through it and are in the middle of it can't really see that they only distance themselves from one thing and do not distance themselves from the thing that's holding them back. Um, for me, that was holding me back for me. That was crippling me. And, um, recently, uh, before I had my second daughter, I struggled with it again. And, um, it was something that came back to kind of haunt me and almost, especially coming up on this COVID season, would have ruined my business if I had not let it go, if I had not moved it out of the way. And so whatever that be in someone's life, that's maybe listening to this, you know, move the things that are a roadblock out of the way. So that way you can continue moving in the direction that you believe for yourself, you can move forward in. That's what I would tell myself back in 2011, whenever I was sitting at a party in Dayton. Thank you for being candid about that because I think that's a very important thing for people. You know, it's not an easy thing to talk about or it's to, not. you know even come out and admit to, but it, it is a powerful thing for people to listen to to see. You know, you may have something. It may not be marijuana. It may be something else that's in your life that's causing you that same problem. But to distance yourself from it, you can achieve what you've achieved in that amount. Of, you know, it, ten years is a long time, but to achieve what you've achieved in ten years is, you know not that much time, you know, cause it is a Thank process that whole 10 years. I know cause even myself, I've been doing it in nine years and to be where I'm at. I mean, I started back in high school and back then I had no intentions of really taking it that seriously. And to be where I am now, I know how much work and effort you've had to put in to get to where you are. So I uh, appreciate you sharing that. Thank you, man. So you mentioned, um, I want to lighten this up a little bit. Yeah, totally. It's so good though. Like it's just, I'm like sitting here, like taking it all in and just taking notes. It's been, it's been deep, but it's been good. So I'm excited for this episode to come out too, just because I think it's good. I think a lot of people are going to resonate with these messages. So you mentioned Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. And one of the things <laughs> that we to uh, talk about on the podcast is book recommendations. So are there any books, resources, or tools that you would recommend to our listeners, you know, as they're just Definitely. getting started? Can I, can I grab them? Is that cool? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Actually, I actually have to grab them right here. Yeah. For so, any, if you're not watching the YouTube of this, Logan's got literally books stacked behind him. That's ready to go. <laughs> and also if you're not watching this, you have to go, you, you have to go watch and just see how um, amazing for the simple, for the simple ones out there. Um, I like the simpleness of, uh, read this. If you want to take great photographs of people, um, by Henry Carroll. I uh, really like this book. Um, it's kind of old school. It's a little bit fun, um, but it kind of shows you the basics, it gets you really in depth and um, kind of introduced to like the idea of different things. So, you know, very simple stuff as far as, you know, the look that you're looking for or, you know, blending something into the background, um, making something out of sight, out of mind, you know, all kinds of things that are very visual based. Um, really, really like this book. Uh, read this if you want to take great photographs of people. Um, another one that I really like, um, I don't actually have it with me because I lend, I lend it to someone else. Um, oh, now I'm going to blank on it. Um, that on it. That's right. Throw us another one. All right, cool. Uh, I have this one right here. This one's absolutely incredible. It is manage your day to day, build routine and find your focus and sharpen your creative mind. Um, Completely love this book. 
Um, I've actually torn pages out of this and stapled it some places in my office because they're just so good. Um, there's there's like random black, uh, just full descriptor pages in here. And again, I'm the kind of guy that like loves those short one-offs. And so here's one. Uh, creation is in part merely the business of foregoing the sm foregoing the great and small distractions. And I just, I just love some of these things. They're, they're really good. So uh, again, manage your day to day, build your routine and focus your focus and sharpen your creative mind. Love that book. We it's went awesome. live not long ago, Logan, you and I, is that the book that you were talking about when we were going live? There was another creative book that we were talking about that you had just finished reading. Do you remember there that? Is. Yeah, that was the one I was thinking of. Um, if I can do a Google search back here, it's, right. by, it's by Chase Jarvis. I know that for a fact. That's right. Um, that's right. Um, Chase Jarvis has a book called um, Creative Calling. So Creative Calling by Chase Jarvis. Love. He's doing actually right now on YouTube, he's doing a book study. Um, on his or a um, book club on his uh, his book creative calling so really good listen would definitely recommend that that's good I'm adding that to the list because I do love Chase Jarvis I love what he has created especially with creative live same um, oh yeah it's amazing buying now with my audible credit there you go Cool. Those are all great recommendations. Thank you. We'll make sure we put those in the show notes. Of course. So as we're coming to a closer to our close, um, this is we're we're going back to a deep question. But what do you want your legacy to be? I would like my legacy to be that I care about people. I just care. I I care if someone is homeless, I care if someone is sad, I care if someone doesn't like where they are and wants to be better, I care. I, I, I probably care a little too much to be honest, TJ. <laughs> I, I, I probably care a little too much, but I really, really care about people and I want them to be happy. It's a great legacy. Thank you. I think that's a great segue, honestly, as somebody who was a follower of Logan's on Instagram before I became friends with Logan. Um, it, it's really apparent that you do care about your, the people who follow you and the people who look up to you as a photographer and your work in general. Um, you, you take time out of your day to talk with people, respond to messages um, and respond to comments. And you'll even bring people in on your lives and educate and do things to with your followers. So, uh, you know, that was helpful to me. And now that we're on a, you know, a friendship basis, we can have these conversations outside of that even, but that's a great segue into where can people find you online if they're interested in learning more about what you do or some of your educational things as well. Definitely. Um, they can find me online at Logan that's my main website um, or anywhere online. Just search Logan Deddy photo. That's D as in David E T T Y. Excellent. And then you were also telling me about some other uh, social networks that you're on. So uh, those might be discussed in a future episode. We might have you back for some of these like new, like things that people aren't paying attention to. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm watching you there too. Watch cool. You. Happy to talk about it, man. I love social media. <laughs> I love connecting. So excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time, both Logan, Justin. Thank you for doing this. Our first Definitely. episode of of Pints and Pixels is uh is through. So thank you guys so much for joining. Hey, cheers. Cheers, cheers for <laughs> friendship. First episode about. down the I we love got it. it. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you. All right. Bye. See ya. Bye.